We all know that setting goals are important and we realize how vital they are as we move through life. The same is related to crafting an impeccable essay that will set your candidacy apart from the rest of the applicants during the admission cycle. That's when SAH has got it covered. Our editors will polish, improve and insert suggestions into your essay and take it to the next level. And using the promo code ADMISSIONS15 will save 15% off your order. Apply it at checkout and make the first step to your successful admission today. Okay, let's get back to our goals. Setting them not only helps increase self-awareness and build self-esteem, but also triggers new behaviors and aligns our focus. As the high schooler continues to grow and becomes more independent, their ability to set goals and work towards them increases significantly. These goals can be related to personal growth, academics, or high school plans. But along with all of these goals, teens can encounter challenges. Not everything works at once. Sometimes you need to work really hard to achieve what has been planned. How to deal with these challenges, set goals that work, and increase self-motivation? My name is Kate, I'm the communication manager of SH, and today we are honored and privileged to discuss all of these questions with Desiree Panlilio, who is a teen life coach and the owner of Encouraging Teens. Desiree specializes in encouraging teens and young adults to set goals, develop healthy academic and personal habits, grow in leadership potential, and create their life path. Desiree, What led you to help other families improve their teens' communication skills and help teens feel more empowered? Like everyone else, I'm a parent. I have two amazing daughters. But like every parent, we can all agree that the teen years are challenging. And to add to our challenge, we're a military family, and my kids attended three different high schools from Connecticut to Florida to Bahrain in the Middle East. And I quickly realized my children were struggling with who they were and what they were doing, And one of the ways to help them be who they wanted to be and create the success that they wanted was to help them develop those communication skills, to be able to articulate what they needed to be successful academically and socially. So as a parent, I was wondering if I was doing a good job and how do I help my daughters create those communication skills? So of course, I read tons of books and I taught my girls what I learned. I took the nuggets of gold and created a program in which helps young teens become more empowered and to learn those communication skills, which help them to articulate what they need, what they want, what their goals are, and how are they going to create that pathway. And as a coach, I help kids understand who they are. And I think that's a very important thing to do nowadays. Desiree, and what are the most common challenges parents face in communication with their children? You know, The most common challenge parents face in communicating with their children is not listening. And that's just a big thing. It's stopping and listening, listening with curiosity, listening with the intent to understand what your teenager is saying. Often we want to just manage our teen, solve the problem, move on, get dinner, cook dinner, drop them off at their you know, swim practice or soccer practice. We forget that we need to stop and really just communicate with them. And teenagers are learning communication skills. They're learning critical thinking skills. Their metacognition is coming into play and they're trying to understand a whole series of emotions that are coming in at different times and how to deal with them. So as a parent, it takes patience and it just takes time, but it really takes listening to your teen and having that opportunity to talk to them. And speaking about parents, are there any ways for them to encourage their teens for personal growth? You know, it's really amazing how much personal growth teens go through just as being teenagers. If you think about when they were young, to their tweens, to their teens, and during that teen age bracket, we're teaching them to not only be teens, but to go out in the world. Because you think about it, they finish high school and they're either off at college, off at tech school, off working, off doing something. And you want them to grow as they do that. And the way to do that as you have your teens at home is to kind of challenge them, push them out of that comfort zone. And you know, not so far that they fail, but so far that they challenge themselves. So is it encouraging your teen to get a job? Is that helping them with personal growth? Absolutely. It's creating a whole nother level of responsibility. Is it having them take more responsibility at home? Absolutely. It's part of that. That helps their personal growth. 
Not only does it help their personal growth and grow in responsibility, but they grow in self-confidence and self-esteem because you as a parent have provided them with something else, something that you know that they can handle. And it sounds silly because we have our kids take out the trash. We have our kids help prep dinner and all of those things help our children to realize that they can do it, that they have the skills to go out and do great things in the world. We're increasing their their personal growth. We're increasing their self-esteem and their self-worth and who they are. So it's really important for parents to encourage their teens' personal growth, and that's doing it by taking them out of their comfort zone. Maybe your teen's never been to a summer camp. What a great opportunity for them to be away from you and understand and grow as a person of what it's like to not be at home, to have to depend on other people or to make new friends without mom and dad there. It sounds crazy, but it really helps your child develop personal growth. And of course, another great thing is having conversations with your teen about any and everything. Sometimes we don't want to have those difficult conversations, but sometimes those difficult conversations are the moments that we learn the most about our teen. And we can help them understand who they are who they're growing into be, who they want to be. So for parents to encourage their teen's personal growth, it's about making sure they're moving out of their comfort zone, but also having some of those very, I call them fierce conversations about life, about politics, about values, about what their goals are and creating those goals. And all of those help your teen grow as an individual and help them develop those skills that they're going to need as they move into that adult world. I totally agree that taking teens from their comfort zone will only help them become more prepared for life. I think self-motivation is very important as it is a driving force for success. But sometimes teens may lack this kind of motivation. What is the easiest way to develop it and is there a way to do it at all? Or is this something you should be born with? Self-motivation, wow, that is a very important force in creating success in life and Sometimes teens lack it, sometimes they don't. Parents ask, how do you increase that self-motivation and is it something you're born with? Self-motivation is definitely not something you're born with. It's actually a learned skill and it sounds kind of crazy because parents are like, why aren't they self-motivated? It's a learned skill and there has to be, you have to find what motivates your teen. And so a simple example is, let's take any athlete. You can take, you know, Tom Brady, one of the greatest quarterbacks, I am sure there are days when he does not want to go work out, but he has to go do it because it's a habit. So self-motivation goes right along with creating habits. And sometimes those habits take over when we don't want to do something. So creating self-motivation, which is motivating yourself to do something, is understanding that you have to do it because there's a reward at the end. And so parents often say they can't get their teen to do homework and they just need to do it. Well, the bigger question or the bigger conversation to have with your teen is how important it is to pass this course. You might not really like biology. I totally understand that. It might not be your thing, but if it's part of the program to help you graduate from high school, you have to do it. You have to pass because you want to do something beyond high school. So self-motivation is a learning opportunity for parents to teach their kids that they have to do stuff because it's there's a goal on the far end. It's looking at the long range goal. And so you have to help them develop that self-motivation. There's that intrinsic motivation, extrinsic motivation kind of, and that extrinsic motivation is what we supply as parents when we're encouraging our kids or you hear the football coach on you know, Friday night yelling at the kid to run that he can make the touchdown. The kid inside himself is intrinsically motivated to make that touchdown and he's running. But sometimes when you hear that extrinsic motivation, it just gets you to push that little bit further. So sometimes when your kid's struggling with self-motivation, it helps to be the parent that comes and gives some positive extrinsic motivation, nothing negative. So you really have to pick those communication skills and those words out really carefully on how to motivate your child. If you were writing an essay for college and your teen just wasn't motivated to write it, you might say, hey, I know this is a really tough thing. How can I help you? And maybe creating that outline with them, maybe going, hey, you know, I remember this about you, or maybe just letting them take a break and coming back to it and encouraging them that they have that skill set to do it. You know, teens are still so unsure of who they are and what they are doing and how to do it well that sometimes that they have that self-motivation, but they just need that parent to provide that extra 
motivation outside of their own internal motivation to get them to do something. And some teenagers like to procrastinate, and that's a habit. Procrastination, as much as we'd like to say, it's what my kid was born with, it wasn't what your teenager was born with. It's a habit they've created. So how do you unteach that habit? And you know, habits are hard. They're hard to you know create, they're hard to break. And so you really have to help your teen find the pathway of what creates that self-motivation and what are the habits to keep going and keep doing that. And they'll have self-motivation for things they're very passionate about. If your teen was super passionate about making the swim team or making the soccer team and it involved having to go running every day, they would do that because they're self-motivated. So sometimes you can take that learning opportunity of how they were really self-motivated to succeed in a certain situation and pull that into the situation where they're not feeling very motivated. And that helps. It helps them bridge the gap. It helps that mind with that critical thinking process that your teen's learning to help them grow and to find out that self-motivation and personal accountability and personal responsibility is all on them. Desiree, let's talk about one more point that is very crucial, setting goals. Achieving a goal can be difficult even for an adult person. What is your strategy for helping teens create goals? Goal setting. Wow, it's probably one of my favorite things to talk about. The best strategy for helping teens create goals is to figure out what those goals are. And I love the SMART system for goals. It's a five-step process about being specific, measurable, attainable, realistic, and time-sensitive. Goals have to have all of those aspects. Otherwise, it's not really a goal. It's a dream. It's something you're thinking about doing. I mean, think about how many people on New Year's say, this is the year I'm going to eat healthy. Well, that's a great thing, but it's a dream because what does eat healthy mean? You have to drill it down. And is it the fact that I am going to stop eating three bags of potato chips and four Diet Cokes every day? Is that what's making, is that your version of healthy? And I know that's a dramatic example, but it's really drilling down to what each of those words mean and how do you do it. So for teens, it's really coming down to creating those goals and they all have academic goals. So it's really very advantageous to start with those because teens can articulate those goals very easily where they say, I want to have a C in algebra one. So you can write that goal. I will have a C in algebra one by the end of the first quarter. Then you can write those steps on how do you achieve that so that they can create that goal. Because wanting that C in algebra doesn't happen just by chance. You have to work. If you want an A, you have to do some more work. And so you have to ask them what kind of work they're willing to give and what kind of work they're willing to put in to achieve that goal. So it's creating goals that are very specific. And I believe that adults should create goals. Everyone should create goals. I have goals. I have three-month goals, six-month goals, and one-year goals. And every three months, I am reevaluating and making sure I've hit those three-month goals. Now those six-month goals are just three months out for me achieving them in that one-year goal. They're coming into the nine-month goal. So what am I adding in? What are my next one-year goals? What am I looking at further out? It's always something that I'm striving to achieve or something I'm striving to be. And it doesn't have to be these big things. I write goals on how many books I'm going to read a year because it challenges me to not turn on the TV. Sounds silly, but if I didn't have that goal of how many books I'm going to read, I like to read two books a month. And if I didn't have that goal down, I probably would watch TV. I probably would watch Netflix. But because I've created that goal and I've made it very specific and I list out the books that I'm going to read, I achieve it. So I think it's really important that we help our teens create goals, that parents create goals. Role modeling is the most powerful way for our kids and especially our teens to learn. Role modeling a behavior, a skill set, whether it's self-motivation, whether it's goal setting, whether it's time management, whether it's communication skills, teens learn by watching us. When you don't think they're watching, they're still watching. They're watching how you communicate with their teacher. They're watching how you communicate with each other, how you communicate with the person that you're paying, buying groceries from. They watch that and that's how they're learning. So you're your child's biggest role model on helping them develop self-motivation on creating those goals. So just keep that in mind that even though you don't feel your teenagers watching, they really are watching and they're learning. Desiree, what is your advice for all the teenagers who feel they lack that inner drive? 
What should they focus on to find solutions for their self-created barriers? Teenagers are great at creating their own barriers. You know, teenagers have this thing of if they feel that they're going to fail something, they sometimes won't even start it. So as a parent, you really have to encourage them and you have to take if they don't do well and it is a hurdle, you have to figure out with them how do they get around that hurdle and you have to praise the behavior, not the outcome. And I know sometimes that's hard as parents that we just want them to be these amazing whatever athlete or amazing students, but you have to really work at the behavior and praise the behavior and then everything else comes. So I think that's super important. For teens that lack inner drive and motivation, I feel that once they understand what their values are, they create a personal mission statement, which I'm a huge fan of, and then from there you can create some very specific goals. When they have goals and they have a pathway, they're more likely to create success. When they understand what their values are, they're more likely to work at achieving those goals based on their values. So for me, it's really important for teens to understand that they need to know who they are, what their own personal mission statement and call to action is, and what their goals are. Those are really important things. The other things that teens are really concerned about is that they like to be the victim. Sometimes they're still learning the, about personal responsibility and personal accountability. So it's a good opportunity to have those conversations that it's not the biology teacher's fault that they got an F. It's their fault. And what are they going to do about it? And when you take down that self-created barrier that where they want to be the victim and blame the teacher and you make them responsible and accountable, you'll be amazed at how they rise to that challenge. I think that we need to give our teenagers the credit that they are these incredible individuals who are very resilient, have a great wealth of resources available to them, and we just need to let them know how to use them. Parents are an amazing resource, and when parents don't have the answer, they seek out other resources. They seek out people to help with college preparation, with writing essays for college, with teen life coaches to help with life skills of the time management or communication or goal setting or you know how to find a friend. All of those things are life skills and they're all teachable. And so if parents you know need some help and need some support in doing that, there's tons of resources for them. But teenagers need to understand that we all want them to succeed, that they are the future, that they are going to go out and do great things and we have to believe in them and believe in their abilities. And I think when parents believe in their teens and we as adults believe in the teens and encourage them, it's amazing how much they can do. So I really think that's important for our teens, that their self-created barriers are broken down by communication, by encouragement, by parents bringing their child's biggest mentor, their biggest life coach, their biggest supporter, their biggest fan, and for everyone else to helping them do that. And it doesn't mean it's always all good. It does mean that there's some fierce conversations and some tough spots because that's what parenting is. It's a hard job. It's a lifelong job. And it's hard to be a, a teen as well and have and trying to learn and navigate everything that's changing and the world's changing rapidly. So we need to have patience, tolerance, and grace with our teens and really with just each other. Desiree, thank you so much for all the insights and secrets you shared today. It was a pure pleasure for me. And now I'm so relieved that self-motivation is something you should work on and not something you're born with. Dear friends, you can subscribe to our channel to make sure you do not miss future shows. My name is Kate and it was The Yellow Editor.